In this video in Infinity Photo, I'm going to show you how to combine filters. Some unusual filters, maximum blur in particular, and also the frequency one. And you might have noticed it in the filters menu and think, what does it do? What does it achieve? Well, I'm just going to go over here, select a brush, and use the paintbrush tool, and apply. Now the brush that I'm using, very colourful design. You won't find it in your brushes, unless you've created it, something like this. But what it does, it applies all these colours. I will show you at the end of the video how to create this brush stroke. Well, once you've created that, what you can then do is go to Filters, and you can go down here to Frequency Separation. Probably one of the more unusual ones, unless you're particularly looking and thinking, oh, what's Frequency Separation? Well, select it, and it just does this, which doesn't look very good, doesn't in fact even look very promising. But what you've got, you can set this radius. And you can see as you do that, and you've got this split. I'm just gonna move that, and you can see that design there. But you can go for this one, median. Medians probably creates a sort of like a very nice painter effect. And I quite like to, you can just boost it up. So if you boost the radius up, you really can create a very odd blurring effect from any image. So this could be, obviously I've created a nice colorful design, such as those brushes. But it could be a photo, it could be type, could be anything. But it does create a very paint effect. You've also got other options here, but I'm just going to click apply now. Takes a few seconds to process. Even worse with this filter, it doesn't seem to actually do anything. Because what it does, it creates this. A high frequency and low frequency. It splits it. Well, I don't want the high frequency. I don't want this. So what I want to do, delete it low frequency that's the side i want so low frequency now you can of course apply some other filters go to filters colors maybe auto levels just slight change up to you very subtle but what you can also do is apply filters blur and maximum blur and this is a great filter you can set the radius fairly high, so I'm going to go for about 90, and also circular. You can also go for a square effect as well. Up to you. But I'm going to go for the circular effect and click apply. It takes a few seconds to process, not instantaneous, but what it does create is the effect that you can go to layer and fade maximum blur. And you can do this with all of the filters. There might be one or two you can't, but that's fade maximum blur. So what I'm going to do, I can set the fade down. Now, it seems counterintuitive. Put it down to zero. You think, well, great. It's, it hasn't done anything then. You need to go here to blend mode. So you can run through these, and you can see as you change it, you go for light and screen. Color dodge is lovely. Creates very intense, bright. And add light color overlay. But the one I'm going to use is negation. There's negation there. And the thing is with this, creates a sort of contour of light. And that's the thing. So if I click apply, I'm just going to move to, so I keep getting brush stroke. I don't want that displayed. Well, you can go here again, filters, and you can repeat. Now you could, of course, go back into the filter, but I'm just going to use the repeat, maximum blur. Take a few seconds, break. and again, total blast out. Well, what you can do, again, layer, fade, maximum blur. Now you can fade most of the features in here. You've got fills, Everything can be faded, which is really good. But again, fortunately, it doesn't remember the last settings. I wish it would remember the last settings. Always puts it to 50%. But you could put it down to zero again. Then go here and negation. And then you've got this. And click apply. And you can do the same. Repeat maximum blur. And again, layer, fade, and again, it goes back, unfortunately, always back to the same thing. There, and negation again. And you can keep, obviously, 15, 10, 20 times. Click apply. Filters, repeat maximum blur. Of course, it blasts it out completely again. But you can see as it does it, you can see that thickness changing each time. So layer, fade maximum blur, and again, fade it. And again, go down here. You don't have to go negation. But it's quite a nice one, I think, for creating this sort of like lovely colour gradient contour effect. I don't know how you would describe it, to be honest. 
So filters, repeat, max and blur. And again, a layer. But it's not in the edit menu. Unfortunately, in Photoshop, it's in the edit menu. Sometimes I go to edit menu when I mean to go to the layer. Slightly different location. And again, negation. And you can see, you can just keep applying it. And I could do this, obviously, indefinitely. And you can create some truly amazing designs using this approach. Now, of course, if I'd saved the earlier image, you could then combine it, blend the two. And of course, you can apply this again. You can always go back with this, go to filters, and always go to frequency separation. I quite like to go backwards and forwards between filters. So frequency separation, again, instead of Gaussian, go for median. And then you can change that and tweak it. And as you see, you can get all range of different designs. Now you could actually keep this as well. You don't need to get rid of it. So click apply. So again, you've got that. So you can keep both. Don't need to get rid of it, but you can hide it, of course, if you want to. Just hide it. You've still got that, and then you can work with it, and then you can combine them maybe later. So again, layer. You could fade the effect. Filters. Down here to blur and maximum blur. Obviously, I haven't applied the filter yet. I need to apply the filter before I actually fade it. And you can set, obviously, the rate. Now, the radius. Can I put that up higher? 200. Some of the filters you can actually push up higher. So you try it, experiment, set it to 200. See if it works better with that. Or you might want to go with 50 to create a, a smaller sort of contour effect. So now, again, it's obviously probably going to take even longer to process, but layer, fade max and blur. And again, you can see you get this lovely smudgy sort of painted effect, which I think is great for backgrounds. You can apply, say maybe you have an image at the front, maybe apply some blurs, and you've got this sort of very weird sort of fate, sort of unusual color effect in the background. Which could of course be any image. Maybe darken it to make it sort of like an evening scene. Negation, again you've got that. Click apply, and again you can see some structure appear in there again. If you go repeat, let's just do it a couple of times, and you can see the result of that layer, fade max and blur, and again, I say, it'd be nice if it remembered. Be nice if it remembered. Then you could, I guess, set up a macro. Probably would be quite a sensible thing, especially if you're using the same negation. And click apply. And there you have this sort of very unusual, surreal looking design. Again, created multiple times. Obviously, I've only played it twice, but you could go for 20 times to apply it over and over again. Again, another thing, probably for a macro. But how to create that brush in the first place, if you want to know how to do that. But as I mentioned, you could use any image. Don't have to use sort of a brush stroke image that I've created. But the brush, how is that created? Let's just delete those now. Go here. Here's a brush tool, and I just use this one. It's a real, really good one. Just select this and apply. This one is dry media and 48. You can see it's square chalk square chalk and set the color to green but nothing there first otherwise you would get the full-on thing i just want that design in the center click here and double click i should say red and again double click to get the blue and you can see then you could do any sort of squiggles doodles like this I love to do that sort of thing. It's just a great sort of start point. And then you've got this, you can select it, you've got this layer. Now also another thing you could do is hold down the ultra option key and you can duplicate it. You can build up a complex set of designs just by a couple of squiggles. So just remove that. With that, go to the brushes, brushes panel, you can find that in the window menu. And you can go here, down here to new brush from selection. So once you've saved it, of course, it requires a few seconds to tweak, double click, and you've got the size there. You might want to reduce the size down. I always find it sometimes the brush becomes unmanageable. Not very easy to use when it's like a thousand, it really fills the screen. So I like to reduce it down a bit. You can modify the spacing. Also, I like to set wet edges off. Now, don't set wet edges. Doesn't mean setting it to off. If it's set, it just doesn't set it. So if it's on already, it will use it as on. I never like the wet edges. So set wedges to off, I always default to that. And then dynamics, size jitter, 
and also you can make it scatter a bit if you want, makes it rotation jitter, and also I love to do hue jitter, saturation jitter, and luminosity jitter. Click OK there, and now again go to the paintbrush tool, and then you can see now you've got your very rapid, very colourful doodle paintbrush. And of course you could create all kinds of different squiggle paintbrushes that you can then use in a similar manner. Maybe rounded ones, instead of obviously this sharper zigzag design. And you've got that design, and then of course you can use that. Again, filters, go and use it here. You could use it with all of the filters. But as mentioned, frequency separation is a very powerful one. If you want to create a painted effect from this, so frequency separation, go here, median, and then just tweak that and you can see straight away, you can create some very unusual sort of painted designs. Click apply. And you've got both the free high as well as the low. And you can always, of course, then blend between them. See, that creates an interesting, something that comes out of that. Maybe negation for that. Doesn't always look good. Something like that. But there's a whole range of different options you can create from a very basic brush stroke. Hope you found this tutorial of interest. Any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you much.